Welcome to part two of this two-part video set about anti-D. In the first video, we learned about the importance of anti-D in pregnancy and how administration of anti-D IG can reduce the risk of sensitization. In this video, we will cover the learning from anti-D IG errors and cases of immune anti-D reported to SHOT. Between 2011 and 2020, over 3,000 reports were submitted and analysed relating to errors with anti-D IG. Most errors related to omission or delay in administration of anti-D IG, or RAADP. Omissions and delays occurred due to failures in communication, early discharge of patients, lack of understanding regarding the requirement for anti-D IG, and assumptions in care. Omissions due to lack of knowledge and understanding about the requirements for anti-DIG frequently occurred in the emergency department setting where anti-DIG is rarely used. These are procedural errors that can be avoided by robust processes, staff and patient education and the use of checklists such as the SHOT aid memoir. Non-invasive prenatal screening for RHD using CFF DNA supported targeted use of anti-DIG to those individuals carrying an RHD positive fetus, but it has also created challenges for anti-DIG management. The test itself has limitations. False negative results lead to omission of anti-DIG and false positive results lead to inappropriate administration. Whilst these cannot be avoided, where discrepant results are noted, investigations can include confirming that the infant is not weak D positive or a rare D type, and the discrepant results are not due to a wrong blood in tube error. Cases of discrepant results should be reported to SHOT and to the reference laboratory where the CFF DNA testing took place. Other errors relating to CFF DNA screening included failure to access the results and misinterpretation of results, lack of interoperability of computer systems between reference laboratories, hospital transfusion laboratories and clinical areas also contributed to these errors. SHOT has been collecting information about immune entity in pregnancy since 2013. Between 2013 and 2020, a total of 377 cases of D immunization were reported. 105 cases occurred in individuals with no previous pregnancy and 272 in individuals with previous pregnancy. The data illustrate missed opportunities where anti-DIG management is not ideal, including delays in RAADP, insufficient dosing and omission of prophylaxis. Looking at the cases with a previous pregnancy, a total of 69 cases noted potentially sensitising events in the preceding pregnancy, of which only 46 were managed correctly. Furthermore, ideal management does not equate to no sensitisation. Delivery beyond 40 weeks and obesity may be risk factors for sensitisation. A comparison of the National Maternity Dataset is required to determine if individuals who are obese or deliver beyond 40 weeks require additional anti-D IG doses. What are the key messages from the SHOT data? There are missed opportunities for anti-D IG prophylaxis where management is not ideal. Errors can be prevented with robust policies and processes. Anti-D IG should be given before patient discharge. There is a need for improved communication between all healthcare professionals involved in patient care. Clinical and laboratory staff must adhere to the necessary checks and take appropriate and timely actions. Pregnant individuals should be educated about potentially sensitising events and the importance of reporting these within 72 hours of occurrence. Processes should be in place to ensure that CFF DNA results are reviewed prior to order or administration of anti-DIG or RAADP. As more hospitals introduce electronic patient record systems, these should be configured to provide clinical decision support for appropriate use of anti-DIG. More information can be found through the following organisations' websites. 
as well as through the SHOT website www.shotuk.org forward slash resources forward slash current dash resources.